while at TechCrunch Disrupt, Mark New was also able to sit down with noted investor Kai Fu Lee. He once headed up Google in China and now runs a venture capital firm in Beijing called Synovation. It even develops technology in-house with a team of more than 200 people. Now, that's far different from the way venture capital firms operate in Silicon Valley. But it's something Lee refers to as China scale. CGTN's Mark sat down with Lee to discuss his thoughts on tech differences between the U.S. and China and why his new book is called AI Superpowers. It's really about uh, how China rose up to become an AI superpower, just like the United States, which is the other AI superpowers. Uh, the book is about the way in which AI is applied in China and um, the great applications in healthcare and education and also that the U.S. and China should not view each other as the competitor, but rather AI will bring about so many opportunities and so many challenges that we should learn from each other. What are the key differences in how China and the U.S. are approaching artificial intelligence? Very different. U.S. is a very technology-centric approach, much stronger in basic research, top researchers. China is much better at deployment, applications, making money, and using data to feed the hungry AI engine, because AI works better with more data, and China has more data than the U.S., uh, and therefore the China AI actually often performs better because of a greater amount of data that's used to train the AI engines. So who's bigger in AI, China or the U.S.? If we look at the top researchers, U.S. is maybe five to one bigger than China. If we look at all researchers, they're probably roughly equal. If we look at the company, AI company's market cap, China is probably two times higher than the U.S in the unicorns or more, ex more successful companies. If you look at the internet AI, I think it's roughly equal with the top internet companies in US and China. Um, if you look at autonomous vehicles, US is ahead by about two years. So I think you can see in each case, it's neck and neck, very close. You like to compare artificial intelligence with electricity, why? Yes, AI is uh, really much more like electricity than weapons. People love the Cold War analogy, but I think AI is an enabling technology uh, that is enabling healthcare applications, retail, uh, edu uh, education, uh, elderly care. It can be applied to finance sector, transportation. It, it's it's uh, something that enables uh, the set of technologies to do the routine work for people at a but much better performance and accuracy. Uh, there will be an economic benefit because an AI-based um, uh, marketing machine is better than humans. An AI-based loan decider is better than humans. An AI-based investment strategy is better than humans. So in each of the cases, there will be a dividend in making money. There will be a dividend in, so in doing routine tasks and saving our time. Uh, much as electricity did. The main difference is electricity took a hundred years to penetrate the world. It's not even fully penetrated today, but AI, because it lives in the cloud and it's just software, uh, can be filled into the um, spaces much faster. Do you think it's inevitable that artificial intelligence will put people out of work on a massive scale? I think it is inevitable. There's a debate about how long. Some people think 10 or 15 years, some people think maybe 30, but uh, the routine jobs that exist today, uh, let's say roughly half of our jobs uh, will be able to be done by AI with better performance, much lower cost, um, and, and therefore enabling people to do other things. There are many other jobs, though, uh, that can be enhanced by AI, so doctors uh, can be aided to have better uh, cure for the patient with the AI helping the doctor's brain working together. Uh, the scientists can di discover more uh, ideas and uh, more drugs, for example, by using AI as a tool to do filtering. You headed up Google in China for a number of years. Word is that Google is trying to get back into China. Do you think they have any hope? I think they certainly want to get back in and uh, I, I wish them luck. Uh, I think um, 
their their products are the best among the best technologies in the world. It'd be great to expose the Chinese users to them. Uh, if they go back and are willing to follow the regulations, I think um, there could be an interesting opportunity. Having said that, uh, since I believe there are parallel universes, any company from one universe trying to go into the other is going to have a hard time. I'm not singling out Google. I think any American internet uh, AI company trying to go Facebook. to China, Facebook, um, Amazon, um, uh, LinkedIn, any, any one of them will have challenges. Uh, but it's, I'm not also not singling out American companies. I also think Tencent, Alibaba, Toutiao, if they want to come to America, they'll also have difficulties. Because the people's expectations and the current way that software works and the way software is built on stacks of each other are so different in the American uh, life and the Chinese life. To take an American company and try to make it work in Chinese or vice versa is going to be an uphill struggle either way.